Welcome back community. So today I'm going to show you the directional framework that we have been working in Honeybook the last three weeks. So we are going to start with an introduction of why we define the logic of the signals like this. Then we're going to review the components that are involved in the directional strategy or directional framework. And then we're going to do a quick demo of how the code works. So, well, first of all, we use this method that is a labeling method. I recommend you this book that is for Marcos Lopez de Prado. He introduces this uh, method to label the observations with one, zero, or minus one, depending on if the, the price touches the, the take profit, the stop loss, or the time limit. And that allows you to then create a classification problem uh, to, and train a, a a machine learning model based on that. We're going to define three barriers because your signal or the indicator that you are using is going to be trained for certain take profit and stop loss levels. So essentially you're going to define, okay, the stop loss is 0.5% from the mid price and the stop loss is 0.3%, something, something like this. And another important concept is a time limit because if you are creating a signal, that signal is not valid forever. So for example, if I'm building a signal for RSI in daily candles, my signal probably is valid that day or the next until the next day. It's no longer valid for, I don't know, 30 days. So essentially we have these three barriers, the take profit, the stop loss and the time limit. Remember that will depend if you are long or short if the take profit is going to be designed or designed, but well, that is another thing. So let's review now the components that are involved in the strategy. So the strategy, every tick will check for new signals, or if you want, you can do like, I don't know, you can create a web socket connection. And when you receive a new signal, you can trigger an event that is up to the developer. But essentially we are going to have like a signal factory that is going to create these signals for different markets. So for example, I'm looking at the RSI. The RSI goes between zero and 100, but the idea is to normalize all the values from minus one to one. And why? It's because we want to standardize the way that we are managing multiple signals for different trading pairs. The easiest way is to define a certain range where minus one is equal to short and one is a, sh a long position, you can normalize all your indicators to those values or a combination of indicators into those values and accept or reject signals based on thresholds. So for example, uh, the RSI is 90. Okay, to normalize the RSI, I'm going to subtract 50 and divide the value by 50. So because the RSI goes from 0 to 100. So now the value is from minus 1 to 1. And 0 0.9 will be something like, I don't know, 0 0.8 uh, normalized. So now if my, if my threshold is 0 0.5, I'm going to accept that signal and start a position. This strategy can receive multiple positions in different trading pairs and different connectors at the same time. It will be like a center of operations where you are going to receive signals from different sources. In this case, I call it a logic that creates signals internally, but you can do whatever you want then. But what it's going to do, the strategy is going to say, okay, I receive a new signal. So now the signal, the value of the signal is higher than the long threshold. Yes or no? If it's higher, okay, create a position executor with a long signal and this position config. So the position config also comes with a signal. Because as we mentioned before, based on the triple barrier method, if we create an indicator or training indicator with certain levels, we should respect those levels we, when we are on production. So each signal can have different take profit and stop loss. So when the signal arrives with the position config, we're going to create a position executor that is going to follow the execution of the signals from the start until the end. The end can be the take profit gets executed, the time we have to close the position due time limit, 
or the we have to trigger a stop loss. So well, that's essentially how it works. We can have multiple executors at a time running. And this is like the introduction of the smart components, like the position executor. There are some kind of components that can do some custom logic for us in a very easy way. So well, now it's time to see the implementation, uh, the code implementation of this. So let's go. As you can see, we have all the logic inside this direction strategy v3 that will be is public right now on GitHub, so you can try it if you want. So we have some objects here. I'm not going to enter in details of all the objects. Then you can review the code if you want. As you can see, we're using TA lib, and right now we have our candles that are computed every second. And then we have the creation of the signal. This is using just the RSI and normalize it as I mentioned, and then returning the signal. And then we have the directional strategy that as you can see is very short. We have some to do's here, like fix a bug in Binance Lua Beta to set the leverage. There is already a PR with a refactor of the Binance Perpetual coming to the code base. And then we have a, well, another improvements like to order the, the, the signals by the highest values to prioritize those signals. Also, we have maximum executors at a time for trading pair and connector. So for example, if you want to only have one position on BTC, USDT on Binance, well, you can configure that too. Is uh, here, max executor by connector and trading pairs. And well, here we are defining just one trading pair. So if you want, you can check the, the code. This is an MVP, as I mentioned, the idea is to then split this script in different components, but only the ones that you think that are useful for you and you want to have in the code base. So well, now it's time to run the script. Well, we are going to use ETH USDT. We have 14K in our testnet. So, well, we have here the client. So, we're going to run start script and directional strategy B3. Status dive. The status, the format status is very cool in this strategy, I think. And we can improve it a little bit more. As you can see, we have here market data the data that we are collecting. Here we have the indicators. This is for ETH, USDT, as you can see, and Binance Perpetual Testnet. This is every second, as you can see, is the delay is 0 0.0203 seconds. It's very, very cool. Uh, well, now the RSI is computed, and the signal, as you can see, now we have a signal. Remember that this signal is in this case only the normalization of the RSI. We are only using the RSI in this case. And the thresholds are 0 0.5 or, C or minus 0 0.5. So when we hit that, that value, okay, now we hit it, uh, that value, we have the position. So as you can see, we take a position. Also, we can see the position here in Binance that is a short position and we have the open order. This is the, uh, the take profit. As you can see here, we have the well the, the ID of the signal, the trading pair, the ch exchange, the side and amount, and also we have the entry price and the current price, uh, obviously the PL. This bar is a time limit because for each position we have a time limit. So this is the progress of the time limit. And here we have the stop loss and the take profit and where the current price is. This is moving based on, on the value. So in this case, it seems like the PNL uh, is negative a little bit, and we are going to close the position by time limit soon. Uh, let's see. Okay. Well, the position is sent. So time limit created, and now we can see close the executors, and we can see the entry price, the close price, and the PNL for this executor, and well. We have computed the signal for the next entry. A good thing is that here in this screen you can see like all the close executors that you are going to have. You can run if the screen, if you have a lot of them and you cannot see them in the screen, instead of running a status dive, you can just run status and have a the you can see this like static. But let's continue seeing with uh, live.
So, well, in this demo, we, sh we were just seeing one trading pair. We are trading on Ethereum USDT. But as I mentioned, this strategy is smart enough to manage multiple positions and executors at a time. So, well, let's stop this a little bit. Let's stop. And let's go to the code that is here. And instead of just running this in ETH USDT, let's also add BTC USDT and see how it works. So we have to run the script again and let's run status live. Okay, well, now as you can see, market data we are collecting for ETH USDT and we are also collecting for. BTC USDT. Ah, uh, well, now when we have the indicators, we're going to start seeing the indicators here in this table. Now you can see the indicators and the value of the signal for the two of them. Remember that we set like max executors by connector and trading pair in one. That means that the we can only have one position in ETH USDT and one position in BTC USDT at a time. That is good because normally when you are trading with, for example, RSI or the other way will be to put a in between signals that can be if you want to use multiple signals in the same trading pair. But normally when you have an RSI higher than 60, probably the next value can be 55 or an, a close value, a closer value to, to 60. So you can enter in two positions at the same time and probably it's not a good idea. One way will be adding a time between signals uh, or the other way is just to limit to one position at a time. But while well, this is uh, created and you can do, you can use it with multiple positions at a time, uh, manage them independent. Because when you are trading, you're going to see that the positions get uh, unified. If, you, if I buy and then I buy again, the position will be unified. This this will keep the positions, uh, each entry as an individual entry, an isolated entry. So it's very cool to calculate the PNL of each of your entries and see where do you fail. So well, in this case we are we are seeing that the RSI is very conservative right now. So I hope that this value can be higher soon so we can see. How is entering the position? Okay, we got a position in BTC is BTC short. So we have a position in BTC USDT. The entry price is this one, and this is the value. The PNL is negative in this case. Is closed. This is the piano that we had. So let's see if we have another one. Okay, we have two positions now. We if is have position two. Let me zoom out a little bit. So here you can see the two active executors running, one in BTC USDT, the other one in ETH USDT. In Binance, we have here the two positions and the two open orders to close each position. Uh, well, it seems like it's going to be closed by time limits. Obviously, we have a very short time limit in this case for demonstration. But well, you can set the time limit, I don't know, for 15 minutes, something like that. So, well, the first position. is closed. Okay. And the second one. Okay. Well, 
that's a quick demonstration of this uh, directional uh, framework. I hope that, that this is useful for you, that you're going to start building your directional strategies. And well, these are some of the questions, but obviously if you want to add anything else, feel free to do it. And well, we're going to read the comments and see how we can improve it. So well, thank you very much and Merry Christmas for all.